An important issue to consider with all machine instructions is the types of operands that instructions accept. Strictly speaking, all data is in binary, but in high-level languages we are used to assigning types to all variables. With machine and assembly instructions, each instruction will interpret the bits of an operand depending on what the instruction is. Take these two registers for example. AL and AH hold these 8-bit values. In binary, we see the zeros and ones that make up the contents. If we do an add command, we would get a result like the following. Here I've done an add command that takes two operands and we are going to store the result of the addition in the first of the two operands. So afterwards the result in AL is this sequence of bits, the result of doing binary addition of those two numbers. So you may think that, oh of course, these are numbers and this is the result of the addition. And that is likely what was intended but I would get this result no matter how these sequences of bits got into those registers. For example, I could have loaded the value that is in AL in the following way. Here we see that the way that this value, this series of bits, got into AL was with a move command where I put the ASCII character J into AL. So J is a character, its ASCII value is 74, and that is what this binary sequence adds up to in decimal. So this is a decimal value, this is that value in binary, and J, capital J specifically, denoted with the single quotes as one character, has this sequence of bits, this ASCII code. So if I move J into AL, it will contain several bits, but then when I add AL to AH, I get a sequence of bits out, and according to the ASCII code at least, neither of these values are characters. Now I'm ignoring Unicode and extended values, because ASCII values only take up the numbers from uh, 0 to 127, which would exclude this bit over here from being used. But the instructions don't care. They will simply take the bits and perform an operation on them to get a result. Similarly, this result here could be interpreted as an unsigned value or a signed value. Does this one mean the result is negative? Or does this one simply mean that the result is a larger number? It's all up to how you choose to interpret it. And in some cases, it's important to use the correct instruction to fit your intended interpretation of the values. Here is a tricky example where interpreting the operand values the right way really matters. We will start with the same bit strings in AL and AH, which are two registers. There is a command in x86 assembly language called multiply or mul, which takes a single operand, multiplies its contents by a different implicit operand, and stores the result in an implicit location. In fact, I'm going to put a comment here explaining it. In x86, semicolons are for comments, and so the result of this instruction will be to store in the register AX the result of AL multiplied by AH. So AH is specified here. AL and AX are implicit. So if I execute this command, the result is the following. After this operation, the register AX will store this long sequence of binary numbers. Now notice that we have 
16 bits here, whereas these two registers only have 8 bits each. These registers store different numbers of bits, and we will get into the details of what these registers can store in a later lesson. For now, all you need to know is that I do this multiplication and the result is stored here. Now, these binary values are equivalent to these decimal values. AL holds 74, AH holds 148, and when you multiply those together, you do indeed get this result, 10,952, which is what this binary sequence represents. However, I pointed out before that for 8-bit numbers, this one here could mean that this result is interpreted as a negative number. In that case, we would not have 148 here. Instead, we would have negative 108 here. So how do we know to multiply 74 by 148 instead of negative 108? Well, the reason is that the mul command specifically applies to unsigned multiplication. That means it will interpret the operands AH and the implicit operand AL as being unsigned numbers, and the result stored in AX will also be an unsigned number. If we instead want to multiply 74 by negative 108, we have to use a different command that treats this sequence of bits as a negative number. That command is imol. So now, all I've done is change this command from mol to imol, and if I do this, the result that ends up in ax will instead be this sequence of bits, which you can confirm on your own, are equivalent to negative 7,992 if we interpret this as a twos complement integer. So this is the correct result for multiplying 74 in decimal by negative 108 in decimal. So knowing the intricacies of these specific assembly commands right now isn't terribly important, but the general takeaway is that the input data was identical but because the command was different, the result changed. This is a general issue that needs to be kept in consideration when doing all assembly operations. It is also worth noting at this point that the distinction between signed and unsigned interpretations of a sequence of bits is not relevant when doing simple addition and subtraction because of how two's complement arithmetic works. It specifically handles that complication for us by giving equivalent results regardless of whether we're doing signed or unsigned addition or subtraction. The last thing I'll do in this video is briefly summarize the types of operands that can be sent to various machine instructions. So we've already seen several numbers in this video and within the category of numbers there's actually several subcategories. Numbers can be signed or unsigned, but they could also be either decimal or floating point, or something called packed decimal, which we'll see at some other time. Addresses refers to memory addresses, and these are used frequently in assembly code. And just remember that when addresses come into a program, in a register for example, they're simply sequences of bits. This means that you can manipulate them with arithmetic operations, which effectively means that you have access to pointers, which are in certain high-level languages. We also saw characters, and in the future we'll be working with logical data, which just means that we're looking at the bits and interpreting them as indicating some other kind of information, such as the presence or absence of something, using ones to represent true and zero to represent false, or using them to represent some other sort of data that is not strictly numbers or addresses or characters. We'll take a more detailed look at the x86 architecture specifically in a future video.